All right, now that we have completed our mold and removed the plug, we're going to go over the steps necessary to create your first fiberglass part. What I did was prep the mold by cleaning it and removing all the clay from all the flanges. I've gone ahead and applied a chemical release agent and wax on top of that. And additionally, I applied some clay in some of the areas that had broken because the gel coat was laid just a little incorrectly. This is going to allow me to still lay down gel coat for the next fiberglass part. There should be very minor cosmetic issues with the clay filling in the voids. So let's go over the steps necessary to spray our gel coat. For this part, we're going to use a polyester gel coat. Now it's very important that you follow the manufacturer's specifications for how much MEKP to catalyze with. With this specific material, it is 10 cc's per 32 ounces or per quart. I've gone back to using a mixer on the drill rather than a stirring stick because I was concerned in the past that I wasn't getting the MEKP to fully mix in with the gel coat. And this worked out perfectly this time. Now it's very important that we spray the gel coat. You wanna shoot for a specific thickness. In this case, somewhere around 20 to 30 mils. Some people recommend layering five mils at a time. I'm going to go ahead and just lay this all on at once and you can measure it using this tool. You simply just spray it down and dab the tool in. It'll show you exactly how thick your gel coat is. So we're going to start by knocking down some of these high spots that was created from the excess gel coat that I put on here, just to make it a little bit easier for the fiberglass to adhere to. Okay, now that the high spots have been knocked down a bit, we are going to do a thin layer of fiberglass veil, and we are going to mix the resin a little hot just to make sure it does not interact with the gel coat too much. It doesn't attack it and cause it to bubble like all the previous attempts that I've done. So we're going to be using about 16 ounces of vinyl ester resin. I have shaken the container thoroughly just to make sure that it's all mixed up. And we are going to go ahead and add our MEKP and mix it up. We're going to do a skim coat with just a little bit of fiberglass veil. And we are hoping that just this thin initial layer will prevent the gel coat from alligatory like the other pieces that we've done. So this specific resin calls for five cc's of MEKP for 16 ounces of resin. So we are going to put about seven and a half in there. Significantly lowers our working time, so we are going to get after it. Just for an example, you can see this was just in there for a minute and it has already tinted the resin. So that's how quickly it attacks the gel coat. So let's go ahead and get this laid up a little bit. see it's already starting to pull off on the brush so it definitely attacks this gel coat quite quick all right so with the part effectively primed we can go ahead and lay down our bail fiberglass veil is not structurally sound it doesn't provide any sort of uh, Structural strength as far as the layup goes, but it does support the gel coat, so it will um, prevent the chance of you know weak spots in your fiberglass causing the gel coat to uh, crack and whatnot. So it's helpful to do, um, not a requirement, but can be helpful. And it conform, conforms very easily, so you don't necessarily have to worry about it uh, causing any air bubbles or anything because you once you've wet it out, it just lays right down. And we'll go ahead and roll out some of these air bubbles, make sure it's as flat as possible. All right, we'll allow this to tack up and cure before we do another layer and hopefully we see that there is no alligator. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and move on to the bumper itself. I think I'm just going to do this skim coat, allow it to do its thing um, to the gel coat, and hopefully once it tacks up, then we're just attacking the uh, resin itself as opposed to hitting the gel coat. Right, I think that's about as good as we're going to get on that. So what I'll do now is add some heat into this shop with my uh, torpedo. Uh, propane heater. 
Okay, we've done that skim coat and thankfully it appears that it will not cause any alligatoring with the gel coat. So what we're going to do now, while it's still slightly tacky, is apply some fiberglass veil to some of the more difficult edges uh, where some of the fiberglass chop strand mat will not adhere very well. Um, there will surely be some bubbles. I don't want to necessarily have to use a lot of chop strand mat because it's not very structurally strong and it does crack very easy. So I'm gonna do one layer of fiberglass chop strand mat followed by two layers of, I think it's six ounce, six, six ounce uh, fiberglass cloth. And that'll provide the structural rigidity that it needs and prevent the cracking um, from impacts that we will surely, you know, deal with while, while in drifting. Um, so let's go ahead and apply this fiberglass veil. This area here is of particular concern because of the type of crevice. Uh, it will become very resin heavy if you try to get a ton of fiberglass in here. Um, so we're going to very uh, carefully apply some of this fiberglass veil. Um, and again, this is not structurally sound, right? I'm tearing it super easy. What this will do is support the gel coat so that there, if uh, there are any voids in my fiberglass chop strand mat, uh, which there surely will be because this is such a complex curve, uh, it will keep the gel coat um, strong, you know. Uh, obviously, that's not the best. Obviously, you want no voids at all, but I just have not been capable of uh, applying it in a method that prevents any voids. So we're going to just reinforce it as much as we can. As you can see, we've laid down our first layer of chop strand mat, which again is not structurally strong, but it will provide some uh, stiffness to this bumper because if I just do fiberglass cloth, it's uh, <clears throat> really flimsy, which is great for impact resistance, not great for you know looking good on the car because it's just flopping around. So let's go ahead and wet this out and then we will let it cure for a bit before we add our fiberglass cloth. All right, it's about as wetted out as we're gonna get. We're gonna go ahead and stab this all down and get it rolled out. We have allowed the bumper to cure for one day just to make sure that this uh, gel coat is not going to alligator. And so we've gone ahead and knocked down any of the little pointy bits from the chop strand mat. And now what we're going to do is measure out areas for the fiberglass cloth and then spray tack it down. Now that our fiberglass reinforcements have been laid out, what we're going to do is do our final layup with resin. This requires a wax additive. In addition to that, we're going to reinforce some of the tougher corners with uh, build glass fibers, and then also use a little bit of a uh, peanut butter putty, which is just silica and milled fibers mixed up with resin to a, a certain thickness that's very similar to peanut butter. And then we will do this fiberglass cloth followed by a little bit more chop strand mat and some of the more difficult areas with fiberglass cloth on top of that. That way the uh, mounting points are thick and, and strong enough to handle you know, putting fasteners through. Now that we've laid down most of our reinforcement for the bumper, what we're going to do is sand along the edge of the uh, mold where the two flanges meet up so that we can get it all cleaned up and make sure that it properly uh, mounts. And then we're going to scuff it up and we will lay in our final reinforcement. So we'll sand it, dust it, and then remount up the mold. Hmm. Well, that will create a unique problem. As you can see, our bolt holes do not line up. They're still very off. Looks as though you can barely see through that one. So I think the only option we have now will be to clamp the outside to keep it tight. And I think that's just caused by the shrink of uh, the fiberglass because fiberglass obviously shrinks. So let's make this work. This is just gonna have to do. We will test this out. Clamp stays strong. Let's do this. 
So just like before, we're gonna go ahead and do one layer of chap strand mat followed by some fiberglass cloth. Actually, yes, that is exactly what we're going to do. We have our first layer of reinforcement in, a little dark, hard to see, but uh, it's in there. And so we'll go ahead and toss on a little bit of fiberglass cloth and some wax, and we'll call this good. So after applying additional reinforcements with fiberglass cloth and a waxed resin, we allowed this part to cure for three days before removing the clamps and pulling the part from the mold. It actually came out quite easy because of the chemical release from Easy Composites, and I really, really recommend using that for all molds. While trimming the bumper, I noticed that the bumper had absolutely no alligatoring with the gel coat, which was purely because I laid the gel coat on so thick, um, as opposed to previous attempts, which caused alligatoring because the gel coat was too thin. However, the bumper did warp in some areas, and I think that's a result of the layup schedule uh, where I allowed the first layer to cure before applying the other layers, and maybe it being a little too resin rich, causing an exotherm a little too hot that caused the bumper to create these weird warps. I may be able to use a heat gun to try to get these out, but I think that this is just gonna be how it's going to be, unfortunately. The other issue is even though the gel coat was thick enough to allow it not to alligator, uh, that unfortunately reduced a ton of the flexibility that I really, really wanted from this part and that I'm showcasing and marketing for the parts that I'm making. So I think for the next layup, I'm going to do fiberglass cloth and minimal amounts of chop strand mat. I'll pull the part out of the mold and then gel coat it after the fact. It won't have the perfect texture, but it will have the flexibility that I want from the parts. So while this part is not perfect, it will be fine for my car. I'm surely going to break it and I'll need to make another. This is not one that I would ever sell because I want the parts that I sell to be perfect. And so we are going to continue to strive for that. So please follow along for the next video where I will try to do this weird layup with a fiberglass cloth and chop strand mat without gel coat. And then doing that after the fact. I haven't seen anyone do that before. So maybe it'll work or maybe it'll just release off the mold while I'm laying it in because there's no gel coat to adhere to it. I don't know. We'll see. But I'll see you guys next time.